Yeah, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as you all are aware, uh, many of you came to the crime scene on uh, Friday, August 24th, where at uh, approximately 1040 that morning, a uh, woman passerby noticed a body in a ditch. Deputies were summoned to that uh, intersection of Russo Road and Johnson Road, which is in northwestern St. Lucie County, where uh, we confirmed uh, a female body was there. Our crime scene, as well as detectives, worked uh, all day uh, Thursday, uh, that Friday. And uh, later that night, we had actually confirmed that the deceased was 23-year-old Tanya Wise. Also discovered uh, during that time, uh, Tanya was, in fact, uh, pregnant. Our detectives continued to investigate this incident, and uh, autopsy was conducted which also confirmed her pregnancy and the fact that she was, in fact, a victim of a murder. Based on these facts, her killer will now face additional charges of killing an unborn child by injury to the mother. And the last time that Tanya was seen was by her family the evening of Thursday, August 23rd. We are currently uh, working to obtain and analyze forensic and digital evidence, but as you know, this takes time. It's not CSI. And uh, we have all hands on deck at our crime lab uh, assessing our uh, evidence that we col collected. Due to this ongoing investigation, uh, the official cause and manner of death will not be shared with you at this time, uh, other than the fact that she is a victim of a murder and the fact that she was pregnant at the time of her death. I'll entertain any questions, but uh, again, this is a very active investigation, and I will probably limit your questions to just generic uh, information. That she was last seen the night before she was found on the side of the road, right? That is correct. By her family members. Like at her house in Port St. Lucie? Or? Yes. Uh, have you spoken to the baby's father, or has the father been identified? Uh, actually, uh, no. The father has not been identified. And um, you can't say anything about like signs of trauma or anything like that, like that to the body? We will not share that with you at this time. Do you have any idea besides her being last seen at her home? Is there somewhere that she may have frequented that you can talk to about that witnesses who also frequent those places might want to come forward and say something? We would ask anyone out there that is uh, watching, listening, that uh, had any interaction with her uh, in the days previous to her death to please contact uh, our detectives, we would like to know uh, what that interaction was and where it was. Was she dating or seeing any someone, someone at the time of her, I guess, passing? No, nope, not really. She wasn't dating anybody? Mm -mm. No. You said she was last seen by her family. Did she, can you say, like, did she, like, leave the house to go on a walk or, or dri was driving home or something like that or driving to we don't know. store? We don't know. I mean, the family saw her and uh, the next minute they said she walked out the front door and then uh, we the next incident they heard about her is when we found her on Russo Road. How many months pregnant was she? Can't tell you that either. So, that, okay. so this is like basically two homicides, I guess? I mean, or this would be classified as two homicides, that is correct. Okay. Because it's uh, unborn. Unborn baby, correct, the fetus. I'm going to go into the next one, which uh, you are also aware of, of, and that is the homeless body at Ridge Haven Road that was found in the homeless camp on Sunday at approximately 9.45 a.m. Uh, deputies responded to that area, which was uh, exactly the 3200 block of Ridge Haven Road. It's uh, very well known as a homeless camp. Once there, they located a dead body, uh, which was already in the stage of severe decomposition. That person has been positively identified as 58-year-old Lynn Russell Conway. He goes by the nickname Rusty. An autopsy was conducted on him the following day and it has been determined that his death was a result of natural causes. Can you spell his name? Sure. Lynn, L-Y-N-N, -N, Russell, R-U-S-S-E-L-L, -S -S -E -L -L, last name Conway, C-O-N, 
W-A-Y. 58 years old. He had a long history of health issues, which uh, probably played a factor in his death. Um, the medical examiner uh, estimated he had been dead approximately 48 hours before he was found. And no crime. No crime whatsoever. Died about 48 hours earlier. Previous to when he was discovered, that is correct. Any questions concerning that death? Just to go back to Tanya real quick, do you have a picture of her that we can share so that by, witnesses can? By all means. We have it on the backboard, okay. but during this press conference it would also pop up uh, on our Facebook page live feed, so. But you can get it on the way out. Sound good? Yes. Ne yeah. yeah. Next one on the board there uh, is a female on the bottom, which you do not know about. Her name is Bonnie Hanks. And approximately 7 a.m. on Tuesday, August 28th, deputies were called to the Cypress Bay Mobile Home Park at 6435 North US number one for a deceased person. Inside the home, deputies discovered 52-year-old Bonnie Hanks. Hanks was not under the care of any physician, so according to our uh, standard operating procedure, detectives and crime scene responded to the home and uh, did not note much uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, the next day, they attended the autopsy where it was determined that, in fact, Bonnie was uh, the victim of a homicide. Her death was not natural. Detectives are continuing to gather evidence and witness statements from those who knew Bonnie and saw her last. If you know Bonnie Hanks or had any involvement with her in the last week, we also want you to call our detectives. And our detectives number uh, is 462-3230. Again, 462-3230. Or you can call Crime Stoppers and remain anonymous. And that number is one 800 273 8477, repeating 1 800 273 8477. I know you might have some questions on this, but we'll go ahead. Well, um, I guess, for, you know, you mentioned that there doesn't seem to be anything out of the necessarily out of the ordinary at the mobile home. Mm -hmm. What, what, um, I guess, what was, uh, what led the medical examiner to believe that it was the victim of a her death was the victim of a crime, I guess, or it was the result of a crime. That I can't share with you. All we know is uh, we are looking uh, for people who interacted with her leading up to her death. And uh, breaking news, I just want to tell you, uh, as a result of this investigation, Bonnie's significant other, who she lived with, Jeffrey Alexander Yankowski, uh, was just arrested on a warrant for uh, first degree murder. And uh, the reason why this warrant was submitted, he was interviewed uh, the following day. He had inconsistency with his statements and uh, other evidence that were gathered at the scene uh, of the death. Um, a warrant was submitted and that was just approved by the state attorney and the judge. So uh, he is under arrest for her murder. Uh, can you spell the last name? Yankowski is Y-A-N-K-O-W-S-S. KI, and we just posted his picture uh, back there on the board. But this was an ongoing investigation since um, since yesterday with interviews and evidence and autopsy results, and uh, the warrant was signed. And Jeffrey is G E R or J? I'm sorry, J E F F R E Y. Yankowski. His middle name is Alexander. Uh, I believe he is. How old is he? Fifty. 50 years old. He uh, was cohabitating on occasion with our victim, Bonnie Hanks, and um, was in fact there when her body was found. And you said first degree murder. First degree murder, correct. And he found the body? Uh, he found the body and called 911, that is correct. Well, he reported she was dead. I don't know if he found the body. He, he called 911 and reported her death. Okay. So, I mean, what evidence do you have, or can you say, that leads you to believe that he's responsible for her death? The autopsy results, which I'm not going to share with you, and the fact that he was on the scene when our deputies arrived, the only known person to interact with her 
uh, in the minutes, days leading up to her, her murder. So. And you were saying that he had some inconsistent statements? That is correct. In his interview, uh, after he was brought in, uh, after the body was removed, we brought him in. He had some inconsistent statements that didn't match up with the crime scene. Tell us this address again um, you mentioned off the top. It is uh, Cypress Bay Mobile Home Park, which is up on North US 1. It's 6435 North US Highway number 1. Does he have any past relationships with the Sheriff's Office? He does. Um, I don't have those with me. Then it, you have them? You want to bring them up here? Or you mean to You know what? I can tell you. Um, 2000, he was arrested for DUI. 2002, he was arrested on a domestic violence case. And in 2003, he was arrested for uh, the sale and delivery of Oxycontin. Domestic violence case on the victim? No. We don't know yet. I don't think we've researched that. But we that that's his past criminal history here. Is the female on the lower left that's the victim of the murder okay. the murderer is on the right and I'm sorry did you say Jeffrey that was called Bonnie Hanks Bonnie you know, Hanks B-O-N-N-I-E-H-A-N-K-S correct okay 52 years old um, and who was the last person obviously before Mr. Jankowski to see her when was she last seen alive I guess Probably by neighbors in her mobile home park. Okay. Do you know when, or do you have an idea when she, when the actual crime occurred, the homicide occurred? We were called in on Tuesday at 7 a.m. and uh, the autopsy confirmed it could have been within eight hours of us being called to the residence. Okay. So the window would have been Monday night late till Tuesday morning. Any death is obviously upsetting by all um, means to everyone, but especially with in Tanya's case, there's an unborn mm -hmm. child. So what is kind of your plea to the public to stress just how important it is that you guys get some sort of information? We want any information, even if people think it's really not important, any information they have about Tanya and her relationships with anyone, we want to know about it. And does that get you guys kind of emotional? By all means. I mean, uh, I didn't attend the autopsy, but uh, detectives who did said it was very emotional. And, you know, I just want to mention one other thing. Um, this recent murder was a result of a domestic uh, violence case, we assume. And uh, domestic violence is kind of rampant in our communities. And uh, there is help for you if you're in this type of relationship, suffering this type of uh, violence uh, reach out to someone we we don't know what's going on until god forbid something like this happens but if you reach out uh, for agencies you can reach out to us and we will try to get you the help that you need the assistance to get you from that type of relationship because uh, if you don't make the call sometimes the end result is death and that's the last thing we want to see the complaint affidavit evidently used to get the murder warrant can we get a copy of that no even though he's been arrested? Not yet. Isn't it public? Can get you a copy of the warrant. Get you a copy of the warrant. How's that? <laughs> Anything else? I know I gave you a lot of information. We have three different uh, cases, uh, two involving murder, one involving a natural uh, death. Uh, the most recent one, even though it just happened Tuesday, arrest was made just now as I was sharing this information with you. And uh, I predict we will have an arrest in the Tanya case. Uh, might not be today, tomorrow, but there will be an arrest forthwith. I'm sorry, Mr. Yankowski, mm -hmm. oh, or where, where was he arrested? Like at the mobile home park, or? I don't know where the arrest was. He was in jail on other charges. He was in jail on other charges. On other charges. So you have clear suspects in the Tanya? We do not, but uh, you know, I know this team that works here, and they're, they're not going to stop. We're not going to stop until we have someone uh, responsible for her murder and her baby's murder in jail. Thank you all.